Welcome to another exciting episode of Satsudan, the show that recaps Time Warp for you, because you knew a month ago that you were going to miss it this time, but uh, you're still pretty sure it's those darn trans people's fault. We got the tag titles on the way, we got the No Boys Allowed semi-finals, let's get going. Our opener is Slash Gallagher going up against Sweet and Sour Larry Sweeney, two foes who didn't do a whole lot. Gallagher showed us a little bit, Sweeney showed us how far he could fly in the rumble. Two of them getting a chance to uh, show off a little bit more here in singles action. Larry Sweeney out to an early uh, dominating start, just kind of ragged on and slashed around for a little bit. Keep him down, the old round and pound kind of playing his own game. Couldn't quite seal the deal though. He got so many two counts, so many 2.9 counts. So many long submission holds with a little rope break just at the end there. Couldn't quite keep Slash Gallagher down. Slash with the big comeback. Series of lariats. Hit a nice power slam, but Sweeney didn't uh, tuck his head quite right. Landed a little funny on his neck. Ref had to stop in. Stop the match. Slash Gallagher, your winner by referee stoppage. Sweeney definitely a little banged up. A little bit of a shiner there, but... Uh, he was able to leave under his own power, so he'll take it easy. He'll be back in a couple weeks, I imagine. Don't worry too much about it. CM Punk and Paul Heyman, we catch up with them, because they certainly can't be bothered to come to the arena lately. Open world champion, having the night out on the town, wandering around on Chicago. Little video package there, you know, fun stuff. He went throughout the first pitch at Wrigley, fended it against Don Flamingo this time in Punch-Out. All that kind of punky stuff. We'll see him at Genesis. We might not see him before then, because that's just the kind of contract he has. Outsiders in action today. They are facing the American Males from WCW. One of the best theme songs of all time. Unfortunately, we did not get to hear it because they came in during the commercial break. Marcus Alexander Bagwell is not yet buff and as a result does not have the stuff. They go down pretty dang easily. Not exactly a cannon fodder team, but a big impressive win for the Outsiders, nonetheless, in quick order. We got bigger fish to fry though. No Boys Allowed Tournament Semi-Finals, Willow Nightingale and Trish Strash squaring off. Willow won her way back into the bracket last week, and she is still riding that high all the way down to the ring, all smiles, all wings. Trish Strash tries to yuck her young, jumping her before the bell, but it doesn't work out too hot for her. Will is able to shrug off the cheap shots and repay in kind. Trish starts the match a little bit banged up, but she's she's a crafty one, Trish Stratus is. She's got a lot of experience, she's got a lot of speed, and she's got a lot of dirty tricks, should she care to use them, and tonight she does hair pulling, eye poking, tights grabbing, the whole nine yards. Can't quite keep her down though, and eventually she goes for a crossbody. Will catches her out of the air. Big pile driver. Everybody's down and out. Trish did not enjoy that pile driver one bit. She comes back all fired up, absolutely going ham, going in with lefts and rights and lefts and rights and lefts and rights. Finally, it's the chip kick. Gets one, two, three. Trish Stratus gets her hand raised, but hang on. Becky Lynch out to the ring though. And she's got Judge Judy with her for some reason. They have a little talk with senior official Charles Robinson, detailing all the shenanigans that Trish had to pull to keep Willow down. And for once, the ref decides to listen. Thanks to the impassioned arguing of Becky Lynch and Judge Judy, the match is overturned. Willow Nightingale gets to advance to the finals. The old dusty finish, folks. Seems a bit odd that Becky would come out and help somebody she considers a nemesis, but good deed for the day, I guess. Maybe just Judge Judy rubbed off on her or something, I don't know. I don't know if Becky Lynch is turning over a new leaf or what, but regardless of that, she is up next against Kyrie Hojo for the other spot in the finals. With fan favorites now, I guess, but uh, one of them a little more credible than the other in that role. Becky trying to play off some of Kyrie's mannerisms. Crowd's not really buying it. I don't know if I am either, but eh, okay. They get down to business. Pretty slow match. Slow pace, technical, deliberate. Styled it, I would say, favors Becky of the two of them, but Kyrie is able to keep up with her. Pretty equal match here. 
very back and forth, both of them not really holding anything back. Becky denying Kyrie a lot of her arsenal, but Kyrie using what she can access and making a good show of it. Becky goes for the disarmor, Kyrie reverses it, gets the Akari, and gets the tap! Kyrie Hojo, your winner, your finals are going to be Kyrie and Willow to become the first ever No Boys Allowed champion. Willow Nightingale actually comes back out to congratulate her. Pets her a little hard on the back. Harry didn't really like that. Shoves back a little bit. Willow didn't like that either. Shoves back a little bit harder. Now we get a little stand up. We get a little, we get a little spark. We get a little fire going between those two. Both very nice ladies, but uh, both scary if you manage to get past that. And uh, we get a little bit of a brawl, a little bit of a warm up for next week. Who gets the better of it? Spikes her a little bit with a pile driver. We'll see how Kyrie is feeling for the title match next week. Should be a good one. The Steiner brothers are out and on the mic. Big tag team title match coming up. They are here to give their thoughts on that. They did lose last week, but now they've got the Lucha Bros together. They are ready for them. They are going to prove they deserve this shot, and they are going to prove it by winning it and becoming the very first tag team champions in ASW. Lucha Brothers have different ideas. Come out to present some of those. Looking at the scoreboard, it was the Lucha Bros who came away with a big win last week, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything this week. It was a pretty good fight last week. Looking for another one here. Faye Phoenix and Scott Steiner into start. Scott with the power badge, definitely, and the size badge. Collar and elbow lock up. Gets the arm twist. Drags him over to his corner for tag to Rick Steiner. Phoenix slips away before he can get into too much trouble. Quick tag to Penta. And takes a few uh, big shots from the Steiners, but just seems to be making him mad a little bit. Fires back, giving it as good as he's getting, but Rick Steiner manages to slip behind him. Big ol' suplex tag to Scott. Working him over in the corner, but Penta comes roaring out of that corner, clotheslines the both of the big guys. Penta chucks both of the Steiners out of the ring. They regroup a little bit. Rick join with him a little bit, and that serves as a distraction because Scott Steiner, the legal man, gives him a clothesline right back. Now Penta the one being launched over the ropes and out of the ring, but Phoenix is able to get a blind tag on Penta's way out. Comes in. Steiner saw it though, they're ready for it. They'd always see blind tags, but they saw that one. Double team, tag over to Rick Steiner while Penta's still recovering on the outside. Big ol' suplex! One, two, 2.999, not quite. Rick Steiner thought that was three. It is pretty debatable, he might have a point. Gets into it with the ref, and Phoenix has had enough. He drop kicks referee Marty Elias into Rick Steiner. That is a DQ. Moral victory maybe, but certainly not. A victory in the ring and on the scoreboard. Your winners by disqualification are the Steiner brothers. We have a special guest on hand to present them with the tag team belts. Out comes who other really than Teddy Long. His job of course is to present the tag belts to the Steiners as the winner of the match, but he ain't feeling it. DQ is a really crappy way to win a title, especially as the first title match in history. He ain't having that, and I support him in that decision. So, we are going to see a rematch at Genesis for the tag team titles, and it's going to be a ladder match, and you can believe that player. And that's the show for the night. We got one more show before our first ever pay-per-view Genesis. Should be a good one too. We've got Kyrie Hojo and Will Nightingale in the main event to crown the first ever NBA champion. Hopefully it goes better than the tag title match. Should be a good one. A little bit of a little bit of bad blood there now. CM Punk will be in action against Arn Anderson. Arden really thinks he deserves a shot at the title after the way he was treated in the Royal Rumble. He's got to prove that though, it's a non-title match. If Arn is able to beat Punk, I will add him to the title match at Genesis. Add him to what, you might ask? I am glad you asked, because our semi-main event will be a six-man battle royale for number one contendership. Daniel Bryan, The Rock, Shawn Michaels, Kofi Kingston, Eddie Guerrero, Kevin Nash, six men enter, 
one man walks away, their ticket punched to a title shot and our first ever pay-per-view main event. Five men who have had very strong performances so far, but nothing to show for them yet. Also, The Rock is here. He's just cool. Before we get to the ladder match, we're going to have one more little preview. Ray Phoenix going to face Scott Steiner in singles action. We will also hear from The Macho Man, your YouTube champion, and we'll be kicking off with Xavier Woods against William Regal. And when the dust settles from all that, we'll have a very good idea of what the Genesis card looks like. We're going to get a CM Punk title defense. We are going to get the Steiners and the Luchas one more time, this time with ladders for the tag titles. We will see how the rest of it shakes out. We got more coming, just haven't decided what yet. Should be a good time, I am looking forward to it, and I will see you there.